So here we are again, uh, number four in the series of What is the Church? And our subject tonight is going to be, um, what is your gift? What is my gift? How can we find our gifts? And before we start this, I want to just have a look at um, something we've not mentioned, and it's very, very important. The whole purpose of the church is that we would reach out to others and cause others to become members of this body of Christ. Matthew 28 verse 19, Jesus said, uh, between the resurrection and the ascension, go therefore, make disciples of every nation. And so this wonderful body that is being built up is growing because new people are coming in. Let's not forget that that's the mission. Um, And as we look at the first verse, we'll see that Ephesians 4, verse um, 11, and we've uh, read this verse several times. And he, Jesus, gave five things, five special gifts, apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and the teachers. Why did he give them? Just to repeat it again, to equip the saints. He gave those people that, 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 so that everybody would be doing the work of ministry and building up the body of Christ. The body of Christ builds up itself in love. That's what it says further on in Ephesians. And here in this list, we have an evangelist. There's an example of that. We imagine an evangelist maybe, in my generation, Billy Graham. Incredibly uh, successful evangelists used of God all over the world. Hundreds of thousands of people became Christians through his ministry and he gave himself to his gift. But also he inspired others to do what he was doing. And an evangelist as well as being someone who's really into the good news, they want to be creating and inspiring other good newsers as they go along. I want to mention four D's this evening. Um, First of all, diversity in finding your gift. And we find that um, in 1 Corinthians 12, which is where we find our second list, there are three lists in Ephesians 4, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and in Romans 12 uh, of the different gifts. And in, in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. Interestingly here, we have a verse that mentions all three members of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are all interested in pouring into the church um, to equip the church uh, to, uh, to build up itself. So there are the, there are the, it's the same Spirit, but a variety of gifts. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. So the gifts of the Spirit, the services of the Lord, and the activities of God. And then it says to each one the, is, is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And so we have this thing of diversity there again. Then interestingly, uh, as we read in, in that verse further, It says, uh, now you are the body of Christ, verse 27, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first, and here the first three we know about, apostles, prophets, third teachers, then, and this is new, miracles, miracle workers, gifts of healing, people who have special gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. So there are supernatural gifts there, and uh, gifts of service, miracles, gifts of healing, and and different kinds of tongues. And we don't see so much of that, honestly, do we, in our day. But if you go to South America and Africa and China, uh, you'll find there is a greater manifestation of the supernatural gifts. God wants us to desire those things, as well as these gifts of helping and administrating. And so the next word is desire. And again, in this passage, verse uh, 31 says, but earnestly desire. 
the higher gifts. I don't know which are the higher ones, um, but whatever, we should be desiring the gift. There should be a hunger in us. The Bible says we should desire to prophesy. The Bible says we should desire, uh, it's good to desire eldership. It's good to want to be a shepherd. It's good to want to help people. There's nothing wrong with that. God wants us to have a desire. But interestingly, it then says, I will show you a still more excellent way. And this is the last verse of 1 Corinthians 12. And the first verse of the next chapter is, it's the love chapter. So the more excellent way is that we would love one another. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's have a look then at um, the third passage, the third list, Romans 12. Uh, verse 5, we though, be, though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having gifts that differ, there we have diversity again, according to the grace given to us. There is no competition in the body of Christ. Competition is a terrible thing. You see, God wants us to, to use our gift and not want the other person's. We should find out what he wants us to do and be satisfied in doing that. And God will give us the grace for what he has called us to do. So let's use them. And here we have the third thing here, is diversity, desire and diligence. God wants us to use the gifts that we've got. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. Now it could be that years ago you used to prophesy and it's died down. God wants to restore that faith and for us to desire and to be used in bringing God's express word to individuals and to his body. If service, give yourself to the serving. If teaching, want to be a good teacher, to understand your subject and to be able to communicate it well. Um, in exhortation, this is a new one, isn't it? What does it mean to exhort? means to encourage. A new life we have a number of encouragers and uh, I know them because uh, if at the end of a message one of them will probably come up to me and say thank you for your message. I found this particular thing helpful and it's a blessing to be encouraged. Or contribution. This is people who have a special gift of giving. Maybe George Muller was one of those um, who raised a uh, thousands of pounds uh, and actually millions in his life in the end and he gave it all away uh, to others he had a gift of contribution and generosity and if we lead it should be with zeal i was reading in one peter and it was saying you elders among you do not lead reluctantly nor for money but willingly our motivation is important and then the final thing acts of mercy this is things, I guess, where we, you know, we, we have uh, gifts to, that, that we really want to help people that are suffering. Maybe we work on food bank. Maybe we have a heart for the homeless. And God puts these gifts in the body. And if we have them, we don't want to be self-righteous. We don't want to be reluctant. We want to do it cheerfully. So let's check our attitude. And then finally... There is the danger. The fourth thing is danger. And with all these things, there's always that danger of ego because we have an inclination to be proud, each and every one of us. I certainly do. And we need to guard against it. James 3 verse 14 says, If you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and be false to the truth because this is where it comes from. This isn't the wisdom that comes from above, but it's earthly, unspiritual and demonic. In fact, when we have these two things in the church, it opens the door to the devil. And I've seen it many times. And there in verse 16, it has the same two words for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist. There will be disorder and every vile practice. So those two things you'll always find. Uh, I think in the old King James Version, it said there is confusion and every evil work. There is confusion. It causes confusion, whereas there is this jealousy, this competition, this wanting to be important, this wanting to do what somebody else has. We need to deal with one another in humility and regard 
others as more important than ourselves and I am speaking to myself because it's a daily, weekly thing. We have to work on these things in our hearts. So let's uh, finish with this thought. What gift has God given me? And it's not a bad thing to find out. What I'd like us to do uh, is to actually, in our breakout groups, do these two things. First of all, ask each other in the group, what are the gifts that you see in each other? Can you remember that? In, in, your, in your breakout groups, ask the other people, what, um, what gifts do you see in me? So that, we, so that everybody has an opportunity what the other people in the group consider their gifts to be. This is useful because often our perception of ourselves is clouded. Maybe we are, we are hurt. Uh, maybe we are overly humble. But God wants us to know the gifts that he has given to us. So encourage one another. And then secondly, pray that God will help us to be diligent in the use of those gifts. Maybe it is that those gifts that you have had died down. You used to prophesy. You thought you, you had a gift of teaching, but you've let it run down. You've given up serving. You've got discouraged. Let's pray that God will, will restore that diligence and that cheerfulness, that zeal in the gifts he's given to us.